Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Happy Honolulu Tuesday afternoon from DeSoto Brown and Martin Despain. Uh, welcome back to Human Human Architecture here, and we're going to have a show about that's very political. So yes. we have a political paradise. Is that true? That's true. That's true. We're talking about presidents. Even however. that. So the first picture, who first comes to our mind when we talk about presidents and architecture, is we can't get around the third president of the United States, Thomas Jefferson. Correct. And he was sort of a hobby architect, we can say. And you visited one of his 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 own project. His right? own project, which is in the lower left corner. That's his home, Monticello, in mm -hmm. Virginia. Mm -hmm. And again, in fact, if we allow ourselves to be critical, and how can one with a third president of the United yes. States, right? But if one would so, it's like seems a little invasive what he was doing. You can also say he copycatted from Italy. He certainly did. He, he there is the Villa Rotonda at the top right. And what he might have wanted to do is at the, just below him is the indigenous architecture. Correct. And this is sort of hanging on and still impacting, like, for example, us, because at the bottom right corner is an attempt to be Monticello at the School of Architecture up at UH and doesn't doesn't quite work that and well. And that's where you work. So, but that was all sort of pre-contact, right? Sort Correct. Of. That's right. Let's move on when, when presidents actually had put their foot on the island. That's Next right. Picture. That's right. Right. And so the first president to actually visit the Hawaiian Islands while he was president was Franklin Roosevelt in 1934. While he was here, he stayed at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel. That's a picture of the uh, room that he stayed at. And he also was the president who was in charge when Pearl Harbor was attacked on December Oops. 7th, 1941. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He came back for a second time in 1944 during World War II. Mm -hmm. So he was here twice. Yeah. And obviously, being our show about human human architecture, we want to see what kind of relationship is there between exactly. the zeitgeist, the architect's era, and the president's era. Mm -hmm. And so, top right is Will Bruder having visited us, and the, you know, the Royal Hawaiian was still one of his favorites. And even though it's an imported style, it's imported from a similar climatic region, right. so right. it still feels pretty good, literally yes, and does. figuratively speaking, right? right? So next picture, who do we have next to Soto? Next, we've got Harry Truman, and he visited several times. First time he visited was during the Korean War, and he decided he wouldn't wear a lei because it looked like he would be on vacation. <laughs> but when he came back after being president and he was a civilian again, he did wear a lei. Mm -hmm. And during his time period was the construction of the Board of Water Supply Building by yeah. Hart Wood. And our friend Don Hibbert is the prime scholar on him, is. so that's pretty cool stuff, right? That's mid-century, it's sure all is. easy breezy, yep. it's all breeze soleil, yeah. so that works great. Next yep. one is going to be... Next, we have got President Eisenhower, and here he is in 1960 riding around in a very kooky looking uh, Lincoln convertible, <laughs> and that was the Googie period. And so uh, on the right, we've got the Foodland Supermarket and the Tiki's at the Windward City Shopping Center from that same time period. Right? And we Stay have good. we have the architect Pete Wimberly who was uh, race you know racing driver. lotuses with Paul Newman, so like a you know Playboy architecture kind of area, right. Googie architecture, yeah. right? And we're sort of saying you know that Lincoln Continental is a little funny, but then. Uh, the next sort of model revision, you know, it became yes. a very uh, legendary car. And Correct. this is next picture because that is his follower, John F. Kennedy, right? Correct. And John F. Kennedy rode around in a 1963 Lincoln Continental Convertible. And you see a picture of him going through Waikiki and Kalakaua Avenue in mm -hmm. 1963. Mm -hmm. And that was the same time period as we can see that the... Uh, Pearl Harbor Memorial, the Arizona Memorial, was constructed and designed. Yeah, and, and I'm jealous of you because this is, for me, the prime time of America at yeah. its heydays and high point, right? And you've been here and you witnessed all that, so I'm I really did. jealous of that. And like an example of the architecture of that time is Alfred Price's, um, you know, Arizona Memorial. Yes. And there's top right, we did a show um, basically about it um, with Jack Ilmer, and we're going to have another one potentially by my colleague, Laura McGuire. And so there's my son, Lenny, visiting some years ago. And we also put in like the architecture that's personally surrounded around John F. Kennedy as sort of he was representing what you always call the rocket age because they were shooting the Absolutely. things to the moon and stuff yeah. like that, and refrigerators and microwaves, this popped yes. up stuff. But yeah. his architecture wasn't quite as Jetson 
didn't lie, no. right? It was rather reactionary. What he came more, from. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. as you pointed out, the zeitgeist of his time period was mm -hmm. the space age, and it was mm -hmm. forward thinking, and it was modern. Okay, and and unfortunately, you know, uh, uh, Kennedy was cruising down uh, Kalaka Avenue in his uh, Lincoln Continental, and that ended up tragic when he was back on the mainland yes. in Texas, and so we all know uh, we all know what happened, and so and that was the same car, and that was the, was the same, same car. car, and so who followed him? We see on the next picture is um, President because Johnson. Because it's Johnson, and I already, uh, you know, referred to you in the show about the Halamanoa that I said you shook his hand twice I when did. he was up there a couple of years did. later. I, right? Yes, that's right. Right. And at, also, uh, you told me that he stayed in the Kahala Hilton at some point, yes, he which did. we did a show about. Yes, he did. And I was digging out one of the early Hawaii Five O series, uh, which is the Samurai, which is called, which plays mainly in Henry J. Kaiser's home and according to uh, online we mm -hmm. also heard that he stayed there but you told me that was when Kaiser already was dead correct right? so the house he stayed in the house but Kaiser was not his host mm -hmm. so again very very innovative and and the next picture is is a president who we probably wouldn't consider to be most innovative no. and he's not sort of you know remember it in the in the best way of because of Watergate but in fact if you match the time of his presidency with the years of architecture we uh going to have, uh, you know, we have Rich in the studio, and he's going to do a show in the summer about this one building, which is the Capitol here. Yes. And, you know, we have a Central Plaza of the Pacific. So these are the prime pieces of, of heyday uh, mid-century yes. architecture that have happened, uh, 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 honestly, uh, at the beginning of his uh, leadership. Yes. But but still, that that's what it is. Correct. And the next one is we allow ourselves to say when things sort of, yeah. well, this is Jimmy Carter, obviously, and you can say he was here, too. Jimmy Carter and his wife Rosalind and their sons lived here while he was in the U.S. Navy and he was stationed at Pearl Harbor. So they actually lived here and uh, later on look back on it very fondly. They were very, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. were very impressed by living here in the Hawaiian Islands. Well, and he he stayed on it on the on the base here yes. pretty much, and yes. he was also the only president who grew up in subsidized housing and social housing. And that impacted him up to today. I mean, he's there at the bottom left. He's out there in his 90s in Canada doing houses for people in need, yeah. for, uh, for you know, poor people, architects of humanity. And he's still out there and doing it. And while his presidency, things like the Royal Hawaiian Shopping Center in its original yes. way. Yes. So these were good days. And he also tried to tell Americans when the first oil crisis came, you got to tighten the belt. You can't yeah. be ex as excessive anymore. But at that time, Americans, if I'm not mistaken, said, who are you to say that? We're going to go for someone mm -hmm. who can tell us, yes, we can. And who was that? Next picture. And that was Ronald Reagan. And Ronald Reagan said, uh, that next picture, Ronald Reagan said, well, hey, let's just live it up. And uh, Ronald Reagan, not necessarily, as you said, a very modern thinking person, but he did live in a very 50s modern home that mm -hmm. was provided to him by General Electric Company because he was their ad sponsor on television. And that's what we call... Uh uh, ranch, ranch. Uh, style, pretty much, and that was a pretty uh, truly American forward-thinking yes. style. Yes. And at the top left, you can see him and Nancy visiting. This is uh, mm -hmm. taking a bath at Kahala. Yes, that's right. right. <laughs> and and the picture at the bottom right, we have put in, uh, you know, when he was shaking, you know, uh, Carter the hand and took over. We said that was at the beginning of sort of things turning reactionary from progressive previously. Yes. And the actual architecture, we see a building here downtown just next door this is pretty symptomatic for the time of Reagan saying hey let's pump more oil in buildings yeah, right. let's be more excessive who cares mm -hmm. so that's how that went right it is. so let's move on we have one more guy from back that is and that is President Clinton and he grew up as a poor man himself but uh, we were saying that does how much does the president have to do with the zeitgeist of the time that he is president? Does mm -hmm. he affect it, or is he just part of it, or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he grew up in a, in humble circumstances, but during the time, his time, there were a lot of ostentatious buildings. Yeah, and the top picture is basically his homes back in Arkansas. Uh, one in Fayetteville, and down there are big monsters here in downtown. They're pretty right. invasive, they're pretty ostentatious, as you said. So again, there seems to be maybe the zeitgeist was turning a certain way, and even though the Correct. presidents tried to basically Correct. maybe re-steer that, maybe that weren't that powerful anymore to Correct. do that. Is that Correct. fair to say? I think you're right. So let's sort of skip a couple of other ones who came after that's right and move to one which we want to point out the actual architecture he 
was related to on the island and, and that picture. he inhabited. And who is that? And that is President Barack Obama. And when he uh, returned to Hawaii after living in Indonesia for a few years with his mother's second husband, they came back and they lived in this little walk-up apartment, which is at 1839 Pokey Street, mm -hmm. which is right just a block away from Punahou School. And this is a good time to point out that Punahou and that area became his neighborhood that he was in. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to see all the places that are connected and, to that. And these, these few story walk-ups turned out to be some of our favorites on the island. One should yeah. actually do a book about that. I look at Laura, you know, another project she needs. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's that's really something. So let's move on. Let's check out his hood, right? Check the out his hood. The boy in the hood. This what did him. he do? Well, he got his first job just a few blocks away from there at the Baskin Robbins ice cream store. Mm -hmm. And so when you go in there today, there is a clipping posted that mm -hmm. says, here's where Barack Obama first had his mm -hmm. first job, and it was mm -hmm. harder than he mm -hmm. thought it was going to be. And also right nearby was the Cinerama Theater. I That's where he got to see Star Wars. There you go. That's where I got to see Star Wars, too. You guys, you guys. I know. And next picture is... Uh looking at where he worked, right? Right, right. He worked in this close-by building. Yeah. Uh, this is Arcadia, mm -hmm. which is a retirement home. Mm -hmm. It was one of the first mm -hmm. high-rise retirement homes. Yeah. And he worked in the kitchen and the dining room, and that's what you see in the bottom right But, but you went in there, this picture, you'd provide these pictures, and that's not the original anymore, no. unfortunately. It seems like it's cheesecaked and brownied. Mm -hmm. And that reminds us to, an, um, you know, makes us to update the picture of the top right. This is the Denny's at my corner at yeah. Kalakaua and Kohio, where you basically see now this decorated sort of you know, pastiche of something, yeah. and yeah, let's not go there anymore. No, we won't. Let's, we just, won't. We let's won't. just keep yeah. going here. Right, correct. <laughs> so then this is also in his neighborhood. Um, he went to Punahou School from 1971 to 1979. That's where he graduated from. But he did something more exciting yes, up there, right? Yes, he did. Right? Yes, Come he did. Come on, tell it. Yes, tell yes, it. yes. Well, the Lutheran Church that you see in the upper right corner, in the parking lot behind the church, which is in the upper left mm -hmm. corner, that's where he and his buddies smoked marijuana. There you go. And he admitted that. So there this, again, is... Uh, many it's experiences there. Very presidential. Yes. Very presidential. Uh -huh. That's absolutely right. Next picture is where you and him were born. Yes, right? we were both born at the Kapilani Medical Center, mm -hmm. or as it was called then, the Maternity Hospital. Mm -hmm. So the, of course, the hospital's been changed a number yeah, of yeah, times yeah. since mm -hmm. we were born. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got a number of other buildings tacked on there, and you took a picture looking up Punahou Street at yeah. the hospital on the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And us, uh, next picture, we've been using automobiles as vehicle yes. for thought. So yes. um, while me driving by there, every Tuesday on my way to the show, I drive by there. And I always, even before I knew the background we're going to yeah. talk about today, yeah. I thought this is a really cool building. Yeah, this it is. is a nice building. And so, um, and at, that's at, your Mercedes. In well, the and then there's, uh, there's the Chrysler up there. So we're talking about sort of clean lines yes. and simplicity and yeah. timelessness. And that's truly what that building is. I agree. As another building by the same architect. And the architect's name is Quan Du Park, or the designer's name yeah. is Quan Du Park. And he also designed the picture, the project that we see at the uh, top left picture in the background of our last show. That's the Waikiki Circle Hotel mm -hmm. Tower. So he did both buildings. But now we're in this building, so let's check it out more and let's get closer. Next picture. Sure. And even though it's called a circle, it's not a circle. It's not a circle. It's called a Punahou it's, circle. It's around the Punahou circle, right? Yeah, that's right. So here you can see what the building uh, pretty much is. It is a sort of lattice screen that these uh, lanai's are sticking out through. So it's kind of a late entry to that show we did a while ago, right? Yes, right. About and if you, if you zoom closer and next picture, try to understand what that is, you can see that the lanai's are very cleverly designed that left and right of the open sort of lanai that sticks out like a tongue, you got these discrete screens out of these lettuces. And at the top picture left, just like the varsity building, mm -hmm. uh, although they're very sort of skeletal and very mm -hmm. thin. And they it's look not like wood. wood. They look right. like wood because they're brown, painted brown. But as you can see, some rebar coming through at the bottom of one at the top left. So they are actually concrete. Right. right. And then sort of, um, so the left, the left lettuce is basically the frontal projection of the door, which is behind. And the door is camouflaged like Correct. wallpaper like so you right. don't see a door right. uh, we had that before in a couple of these yes, two or three story yes, walk-ups yes, and the one on the right could be you see a little bench in 
there and on another unit on the very right you can see you can hide your surfboard right. there which he did he surfed right yes he did he probably he had did. a surfboard there he probably did he also body surfed a lot too exactly and the building is also very sort of liberal as i think we Correct. can call him yes because it's not so strict on what you can do or not on the yeah, lanai right. which the next picture shows because right. someone started to jungle his that's lanai, right that's pretty right. much so this is allowed where in many buildings like oh you can't do this you Correct. can't do that yeah can put towels over the guardrail yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. and here it's like okay we're pretty much democratic you know yeah. and we're everyone can express that. themselves but probably the most recognizable of the building is yeah. another element that we sort of see sort of diagonally projecting mm -hmm. through the image here and let's right. check this out closer which is here that's the crazy cantilevered canopy we did an entire show about those that's a late entry to that and this is a late entry to that and uh, this building was built what 1965 we determined yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. And it's got this really dynamic up and down movement right at the front. And that's the thing that you really see. But as we'll see as we go along, those patterns are repeated once yeah. you get inside. Let's let's do that. Let's jump in. So the next picture. And it wasn't until we checked it out last week. And basically, it's, wow, this is actually continuing. Yeah. This sort of, you know, diamond prismatic sort of shape is sort of uh, continuing there. And... Just, just try to do this these days with the cost of labor right, and sort of right. the, the sort of little demise sort of skills of workers yeah. here. We pointed out in a couple of shows. Correct. This is pretty top notch, right? Right. Even though this is not a very high end building, it's, it's got not. that level of construction that elevates it other than yeah. just totally yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. every day. So let's take an inside outlook next picture. Here, isn't that crazy? I mean, you have this sort of up and down, this valley and 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 hilltops of that structure. That is very, very interesting, right? Correct. And again, the, the effort to do that. And it reminds us of a project. We have our fellow Dokomomo board members here who are going to come and join us at the end of the right. show. And we were really sort of worried about one particular project, which is another prime example of mid-century modern. Yes, and this is. is the Blaisdell Center, which yes. we have done a show, which is this referring to. Correct. And it's basically the same attitude, right? Yes, it is. It's basically making things... Uh, pretty exotically tropically crazy in their form, mm -hmm. you know, and, and 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 making it exciting and going through a pretty large effort to do that. Correct. So this is that, and then so we go further in, and again the contrast with we're in the tropics with vegetation being yes. lush. Yes. So the really cool contrast between uh, the cold concrete and the the warm sort of warming up the cool concrete lush Correct. vegetation. And as you like to say, this is completely easy breezy. This is it completely is. open to the trade well, winds. Let's go to the next picture because that totally. There we are. And never mind the stupid cones. I think this is our paranoid attitude today that people might hit their heads at these sort of slightly angled things. So I'm not, I'm <laughs> we not don't sure know. what that is. But this is basically pretty much concrete uh, floors, you know, pure concrete floors. Yeah. And, um, and and everything is pretty much uh, authentic and is real. And this could be from these days. I mean, this is what the emerging generations mm -hmm. are crazy about mm -hmm. and folding and, and Correct. all these things and being, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, yeah, using all these softwares and basically creating these forms. Yeah, and they right. were they that's were right. pioneers in basically doing that. That's right. Back this in the days. No computer generated anything at the time that Ex this was designed. Ex exactly. Next picture again shows there's some significant planter areas in there. And you also see a bunch of see a bunch of chairs in there and they don't look like you know, Noel or Herman Miller. No, they're not. You know? No, they're, they're not. They're pretty like, you know, whatever. Somebody whatever. To have. Exactly. But you can, you can certainly say I wasn't there at the right time of the day. That was sort of midday. But I assume, and I've seen this driving by at night, that the same thing happens that happens in my building. Bottom right, the Waikiki Grand, that the open lobby becomes the collective yeah. living room. Right. Correct. So it's a very social, Yes. it's very inclusive, and isn't that what he was when he was a president? I certainly think so. Yeah. I think that that, I agree with you, yes. So let's check out the other sides of the building here to be correct, and we always want to point out the orientation of buildings, which is the 101, what you do, this is the picture top left, the Googled, and the building is facing the right direction, it's facing with a nice Mauka and pretty much north. Uh, whereas the south facade, uh, bottom left picture, has the circulation, has the uh, lanai circulation that's going to shade the building. Um, the bottom right picture is the east facade, where you have the warm morning sun being kept out because it's minimally right. glazed Correct. and open pretty right. much. Right. And the picture at the top right is something you pointed out to me that I think Obama was 
first. They were on the top floor, and then they moved down to. They were on 12 first. No, and no, then they, they lived. Went to 10. They lived. They, the, uh, I think the entire time they lived, or certainly the last one that they lived okay. in, was on the top floor. Oh, okay. On okay. the Diamond Head. Yeah, end. but they were on the end, and because the ends are larger they units, they got a bigger picture. Because they go they, all the way through, correct. and so then they have this sort of window that you can see, and that's right. facing south. So it's got that eyebrow overhang that keeps out the sun and the rain, just the way you should do it in the tropics, right? right? So right. it's just done right. And so next picture is the sort of outdoor area. There is this um, CMU uh, wall uh, that's fencing off the property to the to the street. I think that's to Punahou Street. And once again, there is a sort of sexiness within the tectonics of that wall. Yeah. It's a sponginess of, you know, this sort of seating in these uh, look-through ones. Correct. And otherwise, it's blocked. Right. So it's, it's, it's just nice all the way through the little details around the building. Exactly. It's not just a solid plain wall. It's got no. Detailing that's no. very uh, attractive for the eye. And when you look then more uh, Mackay next mm -hmm. picture, you see the adjacent property, which is an actual urban jungle. I mean, yeah, this is, is heavily vegetated with all your citrus fruit and with your mangoes there. <laughs> so this is this is this is urban jungleism at yeah. its finest. Yes, right? it is. And so um, and you're also talking about at its finest. He was looking at other fine pieces of mid-century modern architecture. Next picture. Because this is the other adjacent yeah. one that's just yeah. down towards the ocean. We see Century Tower back, which is a prime uh, Joe Paul Rongstedt uh, skinny tower skinny example, tower. That's right. where he lives. And so we yet have to contact him yeah, and really yeah, show yeah. with him about right, that. Right. But again, this is this is like the context pretty much he, he grew up in Correct. and with and around him. And so, um, again, we always tell the emerging generation, everyone, don't judge a book by the cover. So don't look at buildings from the outside in, but look from the inside out. But unfortunately, even though you had an insight into a unit, yeah. when was that? Uh, after his grandmother died, after President Obama was elected, mm. uh, Bishop Museum was called, and we went to the apartment to choose things to be given to our collection uh -huh. uh, from the Obama family, or what had the, his Obama family mm -hmm, home. They mm -hmm. weren't called Obama because mm -hmm. that was his grandparents. Yeah, yeah. So I did get to actually go into their apartment and mm -hmm. see that it was not a very grand apartment at all. Nothing mm -hmm. in it was grand either. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but then, and also we don't, unfortunately, know someone who lives in Correct. there right now, but thankfully there is a realtor, next picture, who provides these pictures on his website, so thanks uh, Bill Ramsey here, and who provided these pictures, and once again, you can see now how much this makes sense, so this sort of sticking out, tongue-like, concrete balustrade mm -hmm. that just has that sort of uh, um, steel guardrail so you can still look through but you have privacy intimacy projection and protection and basically behind that in front of projections is this bioclimatic um, thermal comfort device of these louvers right and so from looking at the building from down you don't see any louvers because louvers are Correct. mostly sort of controversially seen these days as being outdated and old Correct. you don't see any louvers and the louvers do a great job because you basically get in the air where you want it at the bottom sure do. and then it's going to rise up because hot air then rises up and then you take it out to the back side where there's the jealousies on the uh, circle Other island side. eye right? Right. right so it's really clever so the uh, soda i think this sounds really high-end exclusive right and these are probably because the president lived in there right? right and it's a punaho yeah. right so it's probably going to be multi-million dollar units thinking. And they're probably uh, basically condos, own condos, Correct. right? But then let's wait a minute. At the bottom right there are some signs That's by Bill right, or his in the colleagues. Front. And doesn't it say apartment for rent? It certainly does. Okay, One so, bedroom. So let's check out, go online, check out the price of that. I'm sure it's going to be steep. Next picture. Because we come from the top one. Unfortunately, it's sort of undressing itself more and more in its very overly dressed way. The What's it called? Mahana? Holly Mahana. Uh, Holly Mahana. Which so that is by invasive UH. hermetic uh, privately financed housing at the intersection of King and uh, University Avenue. And we're just like the price text on that is like two grand for a studio yeah. or something like that. So what do we read down here? We're like one bedroom with almost 700 square foot mm -hmm. goes for 1300 That's right. And that's cheaper than my Waikiki Grand, who well, I consider to be a pretty proletarian yeah. paradise. Right, right, right. So the Punahou Circle Apartment 
apartments is not an elite building. And it's not a plush building, no, but no. we've seen it's got some really nice things and, to it. And it has withstood the test of time, because really if you has. do the math, right, it was built in 65, mm -hmm. and the Circle Tower Waikiki was built in 63. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when Obama moved in, he was it, it was, it was seven years later, yeah. right? So it was fairly new. And it's holding up well. Yes, I mean, it is. You know, it could need yes, some, you know, refreshing here and there. Yeah. But the substance is, is still, you know, is. really, really solid. That's right. So I we agree. want to phase out always some, with some personal sort of reflections here. And next picture is basically that being said, you know, yeah. I can say he was very inclusive for me because yes, at the top right, you can see my German uh, general consul, Dennis Zolle here, looking a little bit... Um, you know, the way he looks, because that was at the uh, at the presidential election, the last mm -hmm. one, the morning after. And that's when I got pulled through by a local boy, Barrack, as 65 other ones, aliens here. And just he basically pulled us through because the immig immigration policies were uh, way more moderate and way more supportive mm -hmm. than they are right now. And immediately when I got the, the, the document, uh, I basically took this picture, my, this selfie of me, which shows the invasive hermetic symphony in the back. But that, that what, what Governor Abercrombie basically calls a, a cereal box. A box. We say a microwave yeah. cereal box. Yeah, that's right. And you see the simple two-story building where they basically put on this sort of Obama mural so that's um, yeah. saying something. And the next picture is another connection we have um, uh, to, again, I, I grew up, I have to say, in a similar way. And, you know, in this five-story walk-up in, in Germany, and we had everything that Obama had to hang out in the, in the you know, around the hood, including a movie theater there that we had down there. So I can relate to that very well. And as you can see at the bottom, it informed us to build all these components that this sort of inclusive neighborhood life basically right. wants. Right, right. But let's get back to Honolulu here, next picture. And this is something where uh, we had, uh, what project is that? You know that well, that, that well by now? That is the Varsity Building. And the, the Varsity Building is in the plans in the foreground. I'm assuming that's what that is. Mm -hmm. And who are you meeting with? Well, that's a great compliment because Varsity was one of our inspirations. But that's Primitiva One. Oh, that's Primitiva. Which that's is an yours. homage to Varsity. Pardon me, pardon and me. And we had the great chance to have that being critiqued by the legendary Alfred Yee, yeah. structural engineer, before he passed away. And he endorsed it. And he basically said, I don't want to talk about structure that's easy I want to talk that the building lives yeah. and is alive yeah and this connects to this project here because once again we have a situation here because mr. Kwon Du Park the yes. architect of the building we talked about today yes was acting as an architect but he was trained as an engineer Correct. and him and he had a partnership which Don told us from 1960 uh, 55 to 60 yeah so again all comes full circle that's here right. literally and figuratively that's speaking. right that's right and, but we're now working on Primitiva 2, and Correct. can you update us a little bit? Well, sure. The Primitiva is the project that uh, Martin's classes work on in, UH, in his UH class. And they are always intended to be rounded. They are not rounded. They are intended to be inclusive. Mm -hmm. They are intended to include a lot of activities and a lot of intermingling of people. Um, there are natural elements, such as tree-like forms, et cetera, that they take into account. And they want to use natural materials as much as mm -hmm. possible, replenishable mm -hmm. materials. Mm -hmm. So these are all the things that go into the projects yeah. that your students work on. And you will see it tomorrow because that's you're going right. to be on the review. Oh, that's right. right. I better be ready. So they're going to be very, you will, you, now you've prepared Now yourself. I know all about it. And so they are very tropical exotic. So yes. what kind of leader would that need to be basically to thrive, that kind of architecture? Next picture, concluding picture. Well, we're thinking that maybe this is another presidential candidate who again grew up and lived part of his life here in Honolulu. And in fact, Dwayne Johnson, also known as The Rock, lived in an apartment right near the Pagoda restaurant. There's a circular building right there. And uh, he's Polynesian. He's a variety of, of races. And maybe he's going to be another president who grew up right in Honolulu. Mm -hmm. We'll wait and see. That sounds good to us. So with that, we're going to basically conclude and we're going to phase out into a summer that we're going to do every other show, me being in Germany and you being here. Correct. And every other week, we're going to have our uh, buddies from Dokomomo, which is That's documenting right. so and in, conserving folks. the modern movement. We're going to have them come to the stage now. Correct. Because this is them basically running the show over the yeah, summer. That's right. That's right. And Crouch we, down a little bit so they I can see you so. there if you're too tall. <laughs> there you go. Hello, everybody. So come on, guys. There's more and more. So uh, 
You guys, please tune in over the That's summer. Right. Human Human Architecture with every other week going to be mid-century modern Dokomomo Hawaii, mm -hmm. and it's going to be even better. Even better and more exciting. So uh, look forward to see you then. Bye-bye.